Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at a Toro PowerMax HD model 828OAE. I asked that they send it to me in the box. Normally, if you buy this from a dealer, it'll be assembled, tested, all ready to blow snow. But if you buy online, it may show up in a crate. Or if, if you buy it from a big box store, it'll be put together, but it hasn't been adjusted and tested. So I want to go through those steps with you. So when you get your machine, uh, you can make sure it's working properly and what to adjust if it's not working properly. So first off, the easy way to get this snowblower out of the box is to cut the box itself all the way around on that dotted line. Unfortunately, I've got this one stuck back against another snowblower, so I can't cut all the way around, so I might have to use some power tools to take this crate off. So after I do that, we'll talk about putting it together. Let's get started. Down in the dirt. There are two straps and two tie wraps to cut. There's a strap over here in the front. And it's pretty tough. One in the back. One tie wrap here, and this holds the rod for the chute control and for the shifter. We'll leave that for now, and then one tie wrap up here. <clears throat> Okay, in this bag, there's some nuts and bolts that you're going to need to, to assemble the unit. Just a few. And there should be a quick start guide in here, too. Quick start guide shows you how to put this together the same way that I'm showing you today. Yes. All right, there's no manual in the crate. To get a manual for your Toro equipment, go to Toro.com and you can look up search parts and manuals um, and then put your model number in or your, ser or your, your model number off the nameplate down here and parts listings and the manuals will show up. So then you can either read them on your phone, online, or you can print them off if you want. All right, so far, so good. What's this little plastic here? This little bubble wrap holds the drive lever engaged the little spring and stuff all right so open up this package like my workbench i won't tell you what snow blowers in this one all right so open up the package and find a long carriage bolt a cupped washer and a nut there'll be two of them 
take and pull up the handle. And align that carriage bolt so it's concave with the handle itself. Put the washer and the nut on. And do that for the other side. Then go ahead and tighten them down. Okay, once you get those tightened down and push down on the handle, there'll be no give at all in this. So make sure they're tight enough so that everything is nice and solid. At this point, we can go to putting the shifter rod on and the chute control but I'm gonna take it off this crate so it's a little bit easier to work on. Next, we'll put the shifter on. Grab this package that has the two rods in it. All of the connectors that you need are already put right on it. So I'm going to lay the chute control up for a minute. You see a hook on one end and a adjustment adjustable part on the other end. So it they tell you to take and put this in reverse. So this is your shifter lever, put it all the way down. Pull your little clip. It's a little cold today, my fingers don't wanna work. And put that in here. Put that in the bottom and hook it up. and put the little clevis in. So it goes like this. It goes on the outside of the rod. Then they tell you to take, I have no idea why they want you to put it in reverse for this step, but anyway. Then just put it all the way in the high and then adjust it so it, pull your clip, adjust it so it goes into the hole underneath. <clears throat> And this is all diagrammed out real nice in that quick start guide, so I'm not gonna move the camera. You can look on that quick start guide. And on here there is the, the pin and two washers. One washer goes on each side. Now the way it comes from the factory, that screw adjustment on there is supposed to be ready to go. That was simple, I didn't have to look at it. So the hole is vertical on that when you got it up here. So if you're trying to find it, you get bad, bad eyesight like I do or whatever. So anyway, so it should be adjusted correctly so that this is reverse one, this is reverse two, and then one through six. Some of the guys were complaining with the 928 last year, that when they went to use it, it was too fast. You can adjust that nut on there to slow down your rever your uh, speed or to speed up your reverse. But just remember that whatever adjustment you make there is for the whole thing. So if you make your reverse faster, your top end is going to be slower or vice versa. If you want it to go faster, your reverse will be slower. So it's just a continuous thing. So you, you probably don't have to mess with it, but just in case, all you have to do is adjust that nut on that rod, pull your little clip, adjust that nut in or out to readjust your speed on your snowblower. Okay, next. 
Let's go with putting this in. One rod, two bolts. Get your chute that way. Line it up, put your bolts in. And they both are square punch, so it doesn't matter which side you put it in. and then go ahead and tighten them down. By the way, you need a half inch and a 7 16 for these nuts. And I'm sure they're actually metric, but it matches up to my American set, so. And there's still some bolts left. But first, let's try this. Okay. Works perfectly. All right, there's still a couple bolts left. Let me stop and look at the diagram. I forgot where those go. All right, there was one extra bolt that's not needed in the package that I got. The bolt with the nut goes here. This is a cable guide for the deflector control. There, now I'm happy with that. The cables get moved around a little bit during transport and have them lay down and all that other stuff. So. <clears throat> And if you notice, I'm not cranking down very hard on those because an impact wrench will break these. So be just a little careful. Last thing for assembly is to put your clean out tool here. These are pretty simple, they just snap on. And they ride there. They'll rattle a little bit, but that's okay. Now, let's do a quick check. When you push down on this handle, it controls the wheels and it's spring. It's, there's a spring tensioner on here. So when you pull down on it, you're gonna, that spring's gonna expand and the lever down below is just gonna move just a little bit. Let me move the camera. All right, look at this one over here. When you pull down on the lever, the spring expands and that lever moves just a little bit down there. Doesn't move very far, maybe half inch total. If this is loose but not sloppy, or if there's, and there's no spring tension on, it's adjusted correctly. Same way over on the other side. When you pull down on this, the lever's going to move a little, and it looks like about a half inch, and that spring is going to expand. This will be loose, but not sloppy, and there, the spring won't be expanded. So there'll be just a little flop here to it, but not a whole lot. The man, your operator's manual will show you how to adjust that, and you actually don't do your adjustment you check your adjustments by going inside the belt cover and checking it in there. You shouldn't have to worry about that for years so Belts on the Toros are pretty good. My camera bracket wants to wobble just a little bit here. That's what the swing's all about. On a Toro, when it's turned off, this is easy to move. You can see the lever moving down below but there's no tension on the friction wheel, any of that. 
So you can move this any way you want to and you won't hurt your snowblower. Same way with the chute control. This should be very easy to use. Push down, that releases the dogs in here. So you can adjust your chute sideways and adjust your deflector. So looking at the chute, if you push this down, that unlocks it so it'll move side to side. And then also if you move it forward and back, the deflector goes up and down. And this one is a little sticky. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I think it's just the paint here in this hinge. Yeah, it's the paint here in this hinge is what's causing it. So when you got snow going through it, it's going to work just fine. Or you can put a little bit of oil there or something if you want to play with it. But there's nothing wrong with it. It's just the paint is sticking on it. Brand new machine. You can also go through and take the plastic off any plastic that's left, just this piece here. Or if you can, or you can leave it on if you're worried about the kids scratching your new toy with the, their bicycles. Okay, there's a couple more things that we need to do. Check the oil. It does come with oil in it. And when you pull the dipstick out, it's about three quarters of an inch on there. You can see the markings. If it does need oil for some reason, use 5W20 synthetic. That's what's in it now. Secondly, we want to check the tire pressure. And the easy way to check the tire pressure is to put your hand on the handles and push down on the handles. Both corners should come up at the same time. On this one, it does. This snowblower uses the General Transmission's DI300 auto locking differential in it, or automatic steering or triggerless steering, depends on who you're talking to. And it's critical that your tire pressure is the same on both sides. I like the, the uh, auto turning a lot. In fact, I've gotten used to it to the point where I can't hardly really use a triggered steering anymore. Um, but that one little quirk you have to be aware of. Your tire pressure has to be even and your skid shoes have to be even. If you do that, this thing runs perfectly. You don't need, it's just like uh, driving a shopping cart. If one tire is lower than the other, or if one of the skid shoes is higher than the other, for example, it'll want to pull to, to the right or the left all the time on you, and it'll be kind of irritating. <clears throat> I have a whole video on how to set that up correctly, but simply you need your tire pressure the same and your skid shoes adjusted the same. Okay, so that's number two. Finally, two more things. Second to last, you want to adjust your skid shoes. Your skid shoes are down here. I have a couple different ways that I do this. If I'm working on a smooth surface, like a new blacktop, new cement, patio, stuff like that, what you do is you take a piece of cardboard, lift up your, put your cardboard underneath it, Make for sure that it's on both sides. Then loosen your skid shoes over here and drop them down. Tighten them back up. Make for sure that they're even, level. If you are working on older stuff, like cement that's got some cracks in it and stuff like that, you don't want that scraper bar to catch all the time for you. So use a quarter inch piece of plywood to put set your gap. If you're working on gravel, especially loose gravel, aggregate, um, pea gravel, that type of stuff, uh, you want to set it a lot higher. 
and I typically use a one by four, so you get about a three, five eighths to three quarter inch gap underneath there. That way the skid shoes can sink down in. If you have a gravel or pea gravel driveway, you're not that uh, concerned about getting all the snow off. That leaves just a little bit of snow on, but you don't catch any rocks and throw rocks around. One last thing on the front end here, the Toros all come with steel skid shoes. The professional ones come with cast iron skid shoes for a real long wear. But if you have a real delicate patio, pavers, um, brand new blacktop, something like that, you don't want scratched, and, um, buy the poly skid shoes. And I think the poly skid shoes are about $60 for the Toros, but they're heavy built and they're going to last you for years. When you finally go get ready to use it and put gas in it the first time, let me adjust this a little bit closer. First off, there's a fuel shutoff on it, and they normally come open, so not to confuse you, but... Up and down is closed. This is open. Put your gas in it. You know, put a couple cups in or fill it up, doesn't matter. Put your gas in and then walk away from it for about two minutes. Let the gas run down into the carb, fill up the carb. Uh, at that point, you can also see very quickly if for some reason the float in the carburetor sticks. That hardly ever happens, but if you start seeing gas run down, I'll close this and figure out what's going on. So after, after a couple minutes, air, the gas is where it needs to be. This machine has a throttle, high, low, stop. You can push it all the way down to stop it. When you go to start it, put it all the way to fast, to wrap it. Put your choke all the way over to close. Press your primer bulb three times and then pull it to start it. I don't have any gas in this one. After, as soon as it pops, take your choke and start moving it back. And as the machine warms up, you'll be able to pull the choke back after five, ten seconds, you should be able to pull the choke all the way back. Sometimes if you're running bad gas, if you're get, or it's really cold out, you may not be able to run the choke all the way open. You may have to run it half part way to get the engine to run smoothly. That's a little thing to know about snow engines. Snow engines are, don't have adjustments in the carb at all. Uh, they're fixed jet. Most everything's fixed jet today. But sometimes in the winter, you still need to adjust your fuel ratio, your fuel mixture, and you do that with the choke. So most of the time, you'll be able to run it wide open, but every once in a while, you're going to find that it won't run right, and you have to put a little choke on. This part of the deal. Oh, what did I miss? Not much. This does have a headlight on it, and the headlight stays on all the time. There's no switch to turn it on and off with. It does have the 110 volt electric start. So take a good three prong cord, stick it in here, push the button. If you don't like to pull the rope. All right. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. If you like this video, please like it. If you'd like to see more like this, please subscribe. And I'll tell you, we're going to talk about the, this 828 and the 928 in the next video. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. Down in the earth.